Sindhu for giving me this opportunity to speak here. Mm. Uh, I came here um, mostly to learn not to talk, but um, uh, I, I learned uh, at least I tried to learn a lot, uh, not that I learned really. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, yes, so I will be talking about uh, monogamy of uh, quantum correlations. So, this is uh, sort of the outline. I will of course, tell you uh, what is I mean not the what is monogamy not in society I mean in, uh, in the quantum world and uh, and then I will <coughs> try to um, uh, so, uh, monogamy of correlations comes here okay, in the third point. The, uh, in the fourth fourth point, I mean this uh, the second and third, I will try to uh, somehow uh, tell you that uh, uh, monogamy is uh, independent of uh, first of here. I will try to tell you that uh, monogamy of uh, quantum correlations is independent of the other thing uh, in quantum correlations that uh, at least in quantum information we are very excited about is that there is something some monotonicity under local operations. Um, uh, th that is um, well known in for uh, quantum correlation measures and these two concepts are independent. This is what I will try to tell you in here and here I will tell you that uh, there are other things uh, in the quantum world that are not um, in correlations. Some capacities of uh, quantum channels um, that are um, um, also monogamous. And then here I will tell you about some relations. Um, um, for uh, quantum correlation, Q c will be quantum correlations. And then I will try to tell you about two results uh, in this subject uh, that um, uh, sort of try to. So, here uh, the we will uh, um, uh, 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 see that there are uh, a lot of um, disparate results, uh, uh, some measures violate uh, monogamy, some satisfy when they violate, they violate in different ways. Whereas, so these are sort of um, uh, the is the phenomena is sort of rich and so in these two uh, case I try I will try to um, say that uh, in spite of this uh, um, plethora of uh, different results, it is possible to find some connecting themes in the entire subject, entire, the entire concept of monogamy. Okay, so, yeah, so what is monogamy? Well, it is something like this when you know these two people they are very interested in each other and so they are not very they are sort of careless about the third person I mean, this can be a woman or a man. <coughs> so, this is something like this and uh, so the more a bit more precisely is that so these are Alice and Bob and uh, when they share a maximal amount of quantum correlations, they cannot share any quantum correlation with this person Charu. Well, at least in Bengal where I am from Charu can be a man or a woman. Mm, so, this is sort of uh, politically correct still and uh, so, mm, uh, so this pardon both. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, so I am uh, still a bit incorrect. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, and so this is uh, what uh, in, um, uh, what uh, will be the main thing that I will talk um, uh, whether uh, whether you can. Uh, reduce uh, this maximal to a little bit less and then how much uh, quantum correlations this person can have with each of them. This is the things that I will talk about, these are the things. So, uh, but uh, before going there let me say that I mean uh, classical correlations are certainly not monogamous in any way. Suppose, uh, you have uh, a mixture of equal mixture of three zeros and three ones, um, uh, three pink flowers and three blue flowers and then they violate monogamy in the maximal uh, possible way that, that you can imagine. So, if you have uh, three flowers which are uh, either all pink or either blue, then if you remove one of them the two guys are either both pink or both blue and there are many measures of classical correlations 
and whatever measure you use these two flowers will be maximally correlated. And this and this is symmetric. So, if you uh, if you uh, uh, remove this guy or you remove this guy they are both maximally correlated. So, here you have a situation when Alice and Bob and Alice and Charu are both maximally correlated classically. So, you can have states in the classical world that maximally violate I mean the whose classical correlations maximally violate monogamy. This is what I mean by maximally violation ok. So, we have two uh, we have Alice and Bob and Alice and Charu and this is maximal this is also maximal this is what I will say maximal violation. Now, back to the quantum case. So, when you have such a scenario that uh, they uh, Alice and Bob share maximal quantum correlations they cannot uh, share any quantum correlation with Charu we will call it qualitative monogam. There is something we will uh, will make it quant, uh, quantitative later on, but this is something that we will call qualitative monogam just for the for a name. And uh, as far as I know this um, qualitative version probably came uh, in these papers um, uh, maybe there are other papers earlier who, but uh, as far as I know these were the papers they were actually uh, uh, monogamy was not a um, uh, um, uh, uh, concept uh, that was popular at that time, but so this paper uh, is about quantum cryptography actually how to use something called bell inequalities for quantum cryptography and this is a paper where they um, uh, generate uh, maximally entangled states out of non maximally entangled ones in the case of pure states. So, but uh, along the way they sort of discussed something that would one would um, be similar to this ok. For the notation once more these uh, quantum correlations um, uh, there are many of them and there is many ways to quantify quantum correlations and they broadly fall into two categories. One of them is the are the entanglement measures and so examples of those are something called entanglement I will not even define these in the entanglement of formation negativity was yesterday discussed by Barry and there is something called logarithmic negativity which is related to it there is distillable entanglement and many such measures. The main uh, connecting theme of these measures are that they are all uh, 0 for separable states. And then there is a class of information theoretic quantum correlation measures which are sort of newer uh, uh, more recent than these guys and some examples are quantum discord, quantum work deficit and there are others. And when we call quantum when we mention about quantum correlations we will refer to both of these guys. So, we'll is everything we will call as quantum correlation. <coughs> so, we had already a qualitative version. Now, the quantitative version was probably first discussed in this paper by Kaufman, Kundu and Bill Luters in this PRA paper in 2000 and this is the directly from their paper. What they showed was that if you take a measure they took something called concurrence they took the square of the concurrence. So, C is the concurrence it is a measure of entanglement uh, for uh, two parties and uh, for the square of the concurrence this relation satisfied. So, let me just uh, write something on the board. So, so, suppose I have three parties there is A, there is B and there is C and they share some state rho. Then when I write C square A B or I write Q A B. So, in this paper Q is C square. So, my Q A B is the quantum correlation measure Q 
which in this paper is c square of the state rho a b, where rho a b is this state from where you have traced out c. Okay. Similarly, you can define rho a c, you trace out b, you get rho a c and you calculate the q for that and you calculate q a versus b c, which means you take this state, this is a three party state, but you consider it to be in the partition a versus b c together as a single system. This will become a bipartite state then and I calculate the q for that. Q we are talking about monogamy only for bipartite measures. Monogamy has been considered for multi-party measures, but here we will only speak about bipartite quantum correlation measures. And these are the quantities that are here. And the main thing is that this sum, this thing here and this thing the sum of these two is bounded above, which means that if this guy is large, this has to be small and vice versa. This is what we call as monogamy. In case of concurrence, what happened was it was bounded above by this quantity and uh, Uters gave a argument why this should be so for measures. And he already knew, the, knew that uh, it will not be true for other measures, but he still uh, wanted to, Uters and others, um, uh, he wanted to give an argument and there is a sort of a, not very, um, with all my respect for Bill Uters, I mean it was not very, very um, uh, direct argument, sort of a hand waving type of a thing. But it has uh, become, um, um, uh, so when we say that uh, some measure is quantitatively monogamous, we mean that it satisfies this condition. Okay. So now, yeah, yeah. So exactly. When when it when it satisfies this inequality for all states, then we say that it is monogamous. It will take 5 minutes, right? Yeah. So, it is it's a measure of uh, quantum correlations, which is well defined for two spin off particles. For higher dimensions, it is defined, but it has less uh, physical meaning. <coughs> it is 0 for separable states. I do not know. This was, so, this relation was, so this paper was for spin half, this paper was only for uh, three spin half particles. <coughs> so, once more there is the qualitative version of monogamy and there is the quantitative, quantitative version. Now, the statement that I write here is that all quantum correlations are qualitatively monogamous when you have uh, this is this is a tensor product okay and the d means c d okay so, so this means c d tensor c d tensor c d <coughs> this is what it means so in so this uh, i mean there's nothing to prove here I mean one can probably prove it, but uh, um, uh, nobody has done that. This statement holds in the sense that maximal quantum correlations occur only for pure states for all known quantum correlation measures. And now it is easy to show that if this part of rho a b c is pure, then this can only be as a tensor product of this. 
and then this guy has to be a product state this A C there is no other option and so the entanglement has to be 0 all quantum correlation has to vanish. So, it is in this sense that in d cross d cross d all quantum correlations are qualitatively monogamous, but they are not always quantitatively and this is what we will um, discuss later in the paper uh, later in the talk and uh, um, uh, so well why consider monogamy well it is interesting is there. Uh, but also because it is fundamentally quantum as we already saw that classical correlations do not satisfy monogamy. So, because it is a fundamentally quantum thing may be um, uh, it can have some applications that are fundamentally quantum that are not possible in the classical world. So, um, uh, some things that I uh, uh, noted down here is uh, it is somewhat uh, it is probably uh, useful uh, in a potential resolution of the um, black hole information paradox. I do not know whether it is important in the resolution or important in creating the problem. <coughs> Pardon? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, but the hope is that hopefully it will uh, also be useful in the resolution. <laughs> so, and uh, it has been uh, uh, it is uh, useful in the security considerations of uh, quantum cryptography. This was exactly the Eckert paper. Um, but um, uh, understood probably much later and there are other uses uh, uh, like one can use uh, the, these sort of uh, relations between this quantity, this quantity and this quantity to um, uh, define um, uh, multi party measures of quantum correlations which can uh, thereafter be used for um, uh, detecting uh, phases of quantum systems uh, many, many, many body systems. Okay, so, then this brings to the me to this point. So, okay, so there is something called LOCC that we are sort of obsessed about in quantum information for good reasons hopefully. <coughs> so, if there is a observer a and observer B who has these two quantum systems and it is in some state rho A B. Then LOCC is a class of operations, it stands as local operations, local quantum operations plus classical communication. It means that Alice is in her lab, she can do whatever she likes in the on her particle that is allowed by quantum mechanics can do measurements or unitary operations can add and sealers and do measurements on the entire thing and Bob can do the same. And the post measurement result and the, 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 the results of these uh, measurements they have uh, they can connect on a phone line. I mean can be anything say, say suppose a phone call. So, she can perform a measurement the result can be communicated over a phone call to Bob and Bob can uh, change his measurement setting depending on the measurement result as Alice and this can go on. He can again communicate his measurement result and then she can change her setting of the apparatus of the measurement apparatus or the unitary transformation depending on the result there and this can go on. These class of operations are called LOCC. And now, it is sort of one of probably the most important property or at least one of the most important properties of entanglement measures is that they never increase under LOCC. This is sort of the defining property of entanglement measures we want to find out how much entanglement is there in this state and we try to define something which is not so, is, so the point is that this LOCC is free. So, you can operate uh, how, whatever you, you can how many times you can operate on by LOCC that is free for you. So, something free should not increase your resource entanglement is your resource. 
So, that is why uh, we need this monotonicity, monotonicity means monotonically decreasing. So, yes and uh, these uh, this is true for entanglement, it is not exactly true for these other measures like quantum discord, these information theoretic measures, but they are also monotonic under certain restricted classes. And now, we try to understand whether and we all also saw that these um, uh, quantum correlation measures all of them are qualitatively monogamous. So, I don't understand what you mean by the single most important property of a measure. Uh, you mean the English or the I mean the, the English could be wrong. English is correct. <laughs> okay, the English is correct. I mean what I wanted to be is probably one of the most important uh, properties of entanglement measures. One of the most, but not the most. Uh, maybe even the most. So, for me is the most if somebody does not like it then uh, maybe at least one of the most. So, it is subjective which one you want. Well, yes of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, I wanted to get this clear. So, you have got a uh, uh, quantum entanglement state to begin with. Mm -hmm. so LOCC uh, entangled states are exactly those that cannot be created by LOCC. That's, so, it is necessary and sufficient. It is sufficient. That is the definition of entanglement. Definition of entanglement I think is non-separability, right? Non-separability. Separable states are exactly those that can be created by uh, LOCC. Ah, no, 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 no. So, that is a that is a different thing. Okay, so, so the, the that you increase probabilistically. So, you uh, throw away some guys which are very weakly entangled and you throw them may, maybe even 0. So, you start with many copies. Suppose this is one of the protocol, there are other ways to do that. So you or maybe suppose you take the single copy and you do a measurement here and uh, and the there are two options suppose and when this thing clicks it goes to a uh, higher um, uh, goes to something with higher entanglement when this this thing it goes to something with lower entanglement on average entanglement will decrease but this guy may be hi have higher entanglement than this yeah and you know which one clicks and you can on paper you can find out what are the states that are created and you take only those guys which are coming from this side this is sort of this is some uh, one of the protocols of distillation or concentration of entanglement. Can be, uh, so, how is that different from LOCC? In LOCC I mean that is, uh, so, so, so this is very good. So, uh, when I say it is LOC by LOCC you cannot increase I mean I do not throw it anything out. You mean on average? The, uh, on average does not increase. Uh, so, this was very good yeah. So, when I say that it is monotonicity under LOCC, I mean that it does not on average increase, on average it does not increase. Yeah. So, with certain, so thank you very much. So, on average it does not increase, but for some outcomes it may increase. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. that was <coughs> So, now we have these two um, uh, things monotonicity under LOCC on average and monogamy which are both important properties of entanglement measures. Now, we ask a different question suppose I find all functions that are on average LOCC monotones will they all be monogamous. So, this is not true, this is what I will tell you now. So, I will try to define something that is called locally accessible information, I will define what it is and it will 
say no to this question. So, <coughs> so I consider a source that is creating the state a two particle state rho a b depending on some classical variable x. So, there is some classical variable x like whether it is sunny or not. So, it is a discrete can be continuous, but suppose it is discrete it is 0 1 or can be 0 1 2 3 4. Depending on that the source is creating the state rho a b x. And from experience I know that this x appears with probability p x. So, the ensemble that is being created here is this. So, this is what is written here. A and me and Alice and Bob, the source is creating these two particles and then they are sending it to two people who are in separate labs. Their task is to find out what this x was. So, this classical variable has been encoded in this quantum state and this ensemble has been created and the task now is to find this x. And since they are in separated labs, they will have to do this LOCC between them. Now, there is something called mutual information which can quantify the amount of information that Alice and Bob obtains on a particular LOCC from a particular LOCC protocol. It is uh, the mutual information between this variable x and the measurements outcomes at Alice and Bob. I will not write the formula for that and the locally accessible information is this mutual information maximized over all LOCC based measurement strategies by Alice and Bob. So, it is the, so you try to find out you do a measurement protocol here LOCC based measurement protocol try to find this x and you can do many such protocols and the best protocol meaning from the one from which you get the maximal mutual information we call that value of maximal information as the locally accessible information. You mean it yeah so, so that is a very important uh, good question I mean this LOCC class is a very difficult class. Uh, there is no mathematically uh, com mathematically compact way to write that. So, when we try to find uh, um, uh, find bounds on this quantity or values of this quantity we do not uh, do it in the direct way we do not exhaust all we do it in some backdoor method. Yeah, so, um, it is not possible to exhaust all these properties I mean it is sometimes possible, but it is rarely possible to exhaust all LOCC protocols to find out. Uh, it is typically. Uh, yeah, the definition is precise, but it is mathematically not is the uh, not uh, very easy to write it down. So the definition is fine. So the it's the in the sense that Alice does a measurement. I mean somebody has to start it can she can start or he can start. So, suppose she starts she does a measurement the measurement outcome whatever comes out is sent here by a phone call depending on this she does a measurement. <coughs> so, if this was the outcome he does one measurement suppose m 1 at b b and if this is the one you do something else. And now this can have outcomes and you can go on like this. Uh, uh, so, in the lab of course, you stop when your decoherence has uh, uh, catched up upon you. No, but there is no in the I mean, I mean of course, a theorist I mean for me it is infinite it can go to infinity. <laughs> you can so here we are having single copy. So, this protocol is a single copy. I, I have done it for single but you can define the same thing for multiple copies. No, no, there is no. Uh, 
well it is an infinite series. Reducing the entanglement, yes, uh, on on average, yeah. So, first of all, first of all, uh, it is not uh, uh, true that you need to have entangled states here to have non-trivial things uh, going on in uh, LOCC. You can have product states here for which uh, the you can have to do non-trivial LOCC as well, because uh, these non-orthogonalities can come in very strange ways in a multi-dimensional system. So, so this is uh, what is uh, I will not very um, uh, not uh, uh, define it very um, uh, mathematically, but uh, I will just uh, um, state these two results is that uh, um, uh, this is an uh, LOCC monotone like any entanglement measure, but you can show that there are ensembles for which it violates monogamy maximally. There are ensembles for which you can actually find out uh, these uh, values and uh, it violates monogamy. So, and it is not even quant, it is not even qualitatively monogamous. So, what I wanted to stress here was that the concept of local monotonicity and the concept of monogamy, although they are very related uh, concepts, you can have measures that one is satisfied, the other is not. So, we come to channel capacities, how much time did I use? 20 minutes, 20 minutes I left, <laughs> that is very bad. So, I will be quicker probably. <coughs> so, I will uh, now talk about uh, channel capacities, the reason is that we have already seen that classical correlations are known to violate monogamy maximally. So, the question is that this locally accessible information which, uh, uh, which uh, again uh, violated uh, monogamy maximally, it was about a classical variable. So, it was a quantum ensemble in which this classical variable was encoded, but we were trying to get information about the classical variable. So, the question is, is that the reason for locally accessible information to violate the monogamy? So, for each each choice of this piece of error, <coughs> each choice of each source, each source, source. Each choice, uh -huh. each choice of your probability piece of error, uh -huh. there will be a different measure of your, your whatever you call it. Ah, this uh, that uh, that uh, no, so uh, Uh, so, we have some ensembles for, uh, so for, for when I define, when I say it is a given ensemble, it means I fix my p x and I fix my rho x. So, there are some ensembles of three parties, this is, this were defined for three, um, two parties, yes. So, you can, you have three parties a, b, c and you have p x rho a, b, c x and then you trace out x, get the ensemble of a b for a for some given suppose something like half here and singlet and triplets here and so on. For some such ensemble, the corresponding ensembles of these two parties and that these two parties, the uh, the mutual uh, this uh, locally accessible informations which violate monogamy maximum. For, for, for some ensembles, uh, so some may some satisfy, may some may satisfy, yeah but there are cases where they violate. Okay, so, um, uh, here and uh, so, uh, 
to answer this question we will consider what is called quantum dense coding maybe many of you know about it, but for completeness I will sort of um, go through it and uh, as uh, it is said that uh, uh, whenever you define something about quantum communication this is a quantum communication protocol you should always have pictures of Alice and Bob. So, here are my Alice and Bob. I do not know maybe you do not recognize her some of you at least. So, we will have a communication protocol and where Alice will send some information that she has to Bob. So, she is the sender and he is the receiver and Apurva once told me that you can have a bit, uh, instead of uh, Alice and Bob it can have Akbar and Birbal is just A and B that matters, <laughs> but I will <laughs> stick to Alice and Bob. So, they are in two separate locations and uh, Alice wants to send information about suppose the weather in her location to Bob and it is two bits it is sunny or not or windy or not and this requires two bits of um, yeah, there is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and this can be sent by using four colors yes the two bits is four dimensions. So, this can be pink this can be blue and so on yes, but now if you use a shared entanglement between Alice and Bob. So, suppose before she sends the um, uh, classical message they share a quantum state and suppose it is a singlet state I have ignored a factor 1 by root 2 here and if they do so you can show that instead of the four dimensions for sending the two bits she requires a two dimensional system and this is what is known as quantum dense coding. This was done by Bennett and Wiesner 1992 <coughs> and later on people have considered scenarios where you have many parties has been called distributed quantum dense coding and you try to dream of quantum internets and uh, people have found capacities of such situations and what we find is the following. The suppose you have a scenario where there are there is a quantum state shared between many parties. So, it can be 3, can be 4, can be many and we give them names Alice, Bob, Charu, Neha and so on and all these people they share an n party. So, the, there are n of them and they share an n party quantum state. And Alice wishes to perform dense coding with some of the other parties. She may one day wish to um, uh, uh, perform dense coding with Bob, another day with Neha and so on, but they have the same shared state many copies of them because if you use it you lose it. What you can show is that among all these channels for every state there is only one channel that is quantum all the others are classical or all of them are classical and this is true for arbitrary quantum uh, arbitrary multiparty quantum states. So, it independent of the dimension independent of the number of parties whether it is pure or mixed of these n minus 1 channels that run from Alice to Bob, Alice to Charu, Alice to Neha and so there are n minus 1 channels and there were many options yes there are 2 power n minus 1 options in which they could have yes no yes no, but only these two are allowed either all of them are classical there is no quantum advantage there is no advantage in using quantum mechanics you just call it call by a phone call and that is enough or there is one it, this q could be anywhere 
but there's only one Q and all the others are C. And the proof is actually very simple. And it uses uh, the strong sub additivity of um, the von Neumann entropy that um, Robert Myers was um, using yesterday as well as today, but in a different form. So, for an arbitrary rho ABC, the von Neumann entropy or the entanglement entropy of AB minus SA plus. this is negative. It is equivalent uh, to the form that you were writing. Now, what is known is that if there is a three party, uh, three party quantum state, then this guy, so this is a three party state is rho a b c, this is my rho a b then you can show this was known before that quantum advantage in dense coding is possible only when S A B minus S B is positive. This is a name this is called coherent information in our community at least. So, for an arbitrary state, this state is useful for dense coding only when this is negative, no, only when this is positive and this is useful only when this is positive. Now, you see it is obvious that both of them cannot be positive because the sum is negative. So, the only options are either both are negative or one is positive, one is negative that is the only thing that is and that gives you for the 3. For the multi party it just directly follows from the 3 because suppose there are 4 parties or 5 for which you have two places where you have q and these are c. q means quantum advantage and c means no quantum advantage. Then you take these three guys a, b, c, d, e. So, you take the state of a, b, e and then you see that this state is such that a b as well as a e will have quantum advantage, but this will violate this. So, the only option is that one of them is quantum, all the others are classical or all of them are classical. It is a sending to b. A sending to B. So, because it is either none or either 0 or 1, we wanted to call it a exclusion principle. And so, what we now see after all this is that is the classical capacity, although of a quantum channel that is shown to be strongly monogamous, strongly monogamous in the sense there is either this or the other. And so, and so we answer this question that uh, the reason that there are functions that are that are uh, that violate monogamy, it is uh, not necessarily uh, the reason for that. Uh, is not related to the fact that you are accessing classical information from a quantum state. So, here we found some quantity this locally accessible information 
which was trying to access classical information from the system which was violating monogamy maximally. Whereas, here you have again the capacity of a quantum channel is the classical capacity. So, you try to extract classical information from the channel and that however, is strongly monogamous. So, with maybe well, 5 minutes left I will sort of very quickly go through the rest. Uh, so, yes uh, as I was already discussing uh, that uh, uh, quantum states of uh, shared systems that can be created by LOCC are the separable states and uh, the others are the entangled states is the definition of entanglement. You start with uh, states that have no entanglement huh? you have product states there products your product states. Uh, and uh, so, this uh, says whether something is entangled or not and now when you know that something is entangled you want to quantify it and there are many ways to quantify them uh, and uh, these uh, functions are called entanglement measures. And uh, um, there are uh, limitations uh, there are um, uh, there are monogamy relations uh, for sharing entanglement. So, um, in particular this concurrent squared is a uh, is an entanglement measure that is known to be quantitatively monogamous. So, it satisfies the quantitative monogamy relations for n qubit states arbitrary n qubit states pure or mixed is the same status is for negativity square not for the negativity, but the negativity squared. However, is not true for entanglement of formation even for 3 qubit pure states ok. And uh, there are many other results known like this and there is a, um, a very good review by um, uh, Barry Sanders on this is probably the one of the rare or maybe only the only review in non monogamy of entanglement. And, uh, <coughs> but once you uh, um, uh, go to um, uh, information theoretic measures um, uh, the, um, uh, the situation gets a bit more complicated and maybe I sort of um, go away uh, just um, uh, do not consider that I directly go to my next part which is that. Uh, I try to show that uh, all quantum correlations can be made monogamous this made is the word that I will what does it mean by made. So, first of all entanglement of formation is a measure of entanglement it was for a long time it is known that it is not monogamous, but it is also known that if you take concurrence squared which is actually a monotonically increasing function of entanglement of formation that is monogamous. Similarly, this discord which we did not which I uh, did not um, uh, discuss is quantum discord is a measure of quantum correlations uh, uh, with an information theoretic measure it is again not monogamous, but if you take the discord squared then it turns out to be monogamous for 3 qubit pure states for higher dimensions it is not true a uh, higher number of parties is not true. So, now what we show is that this feature is a general feature more precisely if you take any quantum correlation measure which is not exactly any it satisfies something, but forget about this black part. So, the red part is that any quantum correlation measure from some set reasonable set they can be made monogamous by considering an increasing function of the same. So, you just consider suppose you consider the powers of them. Then this function this increasing function is still a valid quantum correlation measure because it is an increasing function it satisfies all the uh, um, all the properties and we also show that it is a reversible. So, for example, it is just the power. So, if you know this you can find the power if you know the power you can find this. So, it is a reversible function there is no loss of data. So, for every quantum correlation measure you can find a monotonically increasing function of it which will be monogamous independent of the fact whether 
the parent measure was or was not monogamous. So, this is one result that I wanted to show and the other one, so I go away just gloss over the other result is this one. is when I go, so I wanted to find out the status of the monogamy when I consider a larger number of states instead of considering only three parties. So, for that I show you a bad looking table, but uh, so let me describe it. So, this n is the number of parties. So, I consider three party states these are all qubits. I consider three party three qubit states, four qubit states and 5 qubit states pure states. And these are measures of entanglement the different measure this is the concurrence this is the entanglement formation and formation squared negativity logarithmic negativity and these are measures. And the delta means this quantity this q a versus b c minus q a b minus q a c. Remember that if this quantity is, uh, if it is negative, then it satisfies monogamy. The corresponding state satisfies monogamy. If it is positive, then it violates. Okay. So now these numbers are. So I generate. 10 power 5 states are uniformly uh, this would be the n qubit not only 3 over the entire state space and I calculate these quantities for this quantity for different measures. And I try to find out the percentage of states for which monogamy is satisfied. Now, there are all these numbers the feature that I want to show you is that as you go to higher number of parties they all become 100. So, these were for entanglement measures. Now, consider this information theoretic measure these are again different measures of uh, information theoretic measures and again the same feature holds they again become 100 or almost 100 when you consider a moderately high number of particles. Okay. So, this is one fact. Now, Uh, yeah, no, 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 yeah. So this is wrong. Which so is this n, n, this is an n cube. So, yeah, thank you. <coughs> so this is a numerical result that we. This is the numerical um, observation. And now, this is an analytical thing. What we show is that if entanglement of formation, this is the measure of entanglement. If entanglement of formation is monogamous for a certain state. Entanglement formation is not monogamous for all states, but there are some states for which it is monogamous. For those states, all good entanglement measures are also monogamous. Now, what is good? I call a measure good if it is less than the entanglement of formation for all states and if it is equal to the entanglement entropy, the local phenomenon entropy for pure states. And there are many such measures important examples are the something called distillable entanglement there is relative entropy of entanglement there is um, uh, regularized relative entropy of entanglement there are many of them and these are very important measures they are operationally very useful, but it is very difficult to calculate them. Now, for all these measures they fall under this category of good. Now, what we see this table that I showed shows that the entanglement of formation is monogamous for almost all pure states of 5 qubits and above. Remember go let us go back to the table. So, here is the entanglement of formation and as you go to 5 is already at 4 we did not find anything. So, we assume that it is converged here. So, I am saying it is almost all states because in numerical searches you uh, can never be sure there can be some sets of measure 0 that um, 
we, uh, we never um, uh, generated. But what we see is that almost all of them turned out to be monogamous. So now, by this theorem, what we see is that the same is true, the same meaning that monogamy for almost all pure states of 5 qubits and above is true for distillable entanglement or relative entropy of entanglement, all good measures. Now, if you take a arbitrary pure 5 qubit state, it is not possible to calculate. So, even if it is pure, so suppose it is A, B, C up to E and you want to find out whether this state has uh, uh, distillable entanglement for this is uh, monogamous or not. You have to find the distillable entanglement of this state and this is almost never possible. So, that is where we think that our result is useful is that we show that we observe numerically that for almost all states entanglement of formation is monogamous. And then if for some states these things hold that if the measure is less than entanglement of formation and if it is equal to the local von Neumann entropy for pure states, then we can say that for that measure the, 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 the measure is monogamous for almost all states. So, that was all. <coughs> so, uh, so, I tried to say that um, monogamy is interesting, um, uh, well at least for quantum correlations and and sort of the, 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 the terrain is rich which uh, large de deviations in behavior from one quantity to another, but uh, seemingly there are some general results that are um, that connect the um, uh, different um, uh, results that are known. So, these are the people, people who did all this work, but I will not uh, uh, not including my daughter. Uh, and uh, with that I thank you. I think we will postpone the lectures, uh, uh, sorry the questions <laughs> <laughs> and we will meet at 2.30 uh, for the ICTS seminar. <laughs>